What's up guys, I'm Landon from Shoewear and as 2021 comes to a close, I wanted to give you guys the top five basketball shoes that were released this year. So a little disclaimer, I didn't play in every shoe that came out, but I did play in like every signature shoe line and you know, honestly most lines outside of that that each brand released. So this is kind of a hybrid of like top shoes that are also just like my favorite shoes to play in because I can't really speak on the shoes I didn't test out, but really quick, if this is your first time checking us out, feel free to drop a follow or subscribe wherever you're watching and give this video a like, but no more reason to waste any time. Let's get into it. So kicking off the list at number five is the Nike Cosmic Unity. This shoe was debuted by Anthony Davis back in February whenever they were released and I was pretty intrigued from the jump. The design really caught my attention with that sort of crater look on the midsole and on the back. So, you know, the upper has more of a wavy pattern or flow, which does look really nice. And I love the Cosmic Unity logo that shows up on the tongue for these. So, you know, it's just an altogether good looking shoe in my opinion, of course. You know, the shoe does fall in line with Nike's move to end plastic waste with at least 25% of the shoe being made up of some form of recycled content. So, you know, you have to love that aspect as well. But looking at how these shoes play, the Cosmic Unity uses a full length Air Zoom Strobel unit, kind of similar to what KD's line has been going with. And, you know, it does give these a really nice feel. And there's a lot of nice elements to this Cosmic Unity, but the cushion is probably the selling point. But there's also like a lot of layers of textile on the upper Upper, which is going to be really good for support and the lateral containment on the shoe you know it's just really solid they give you a nice and secure feel and nike did a good job with the ventilation you know kind of adding to that because with all those layers they still kept them breathable but for traction these do have a herringbone pattern that covers the shoe from front to back so that's pretty much the standard for a lot of basketball shoes that design does play super well on most shoes and it did the same here so they do slip a little bit when they get dusty but in general the traction is just well above average so you know, for a new model, I think Nike knocked this shoe out of the park. There were a ton of colorways that were released and I pretty much loved them all. The retail price is set for 150, so it's gonna be pretty much middle of the pack, but the design is sweet. The cushion and the support is great. There's just really no major weakness, which is of course why these cracked the list at number five. All right, so I had to break out the jersey for this one because coming in at number four is our first signature shoe line, the Nike Paul George 5 or PG5. So following the PG4 release with that zipper running up the middle, I was kind of curious on what the PG5 would look like. And I can't lie, I was a little unimpressed whenever I saw the initial photos that were leaked for the design. But whenever I got these shoes into review and kind of test out, I was just shocked at how well they played. So. This is a really soft shoe. Nike uses a full length Nike Air Dot strobe for cushioning and these have a Phylon midsole that just feels really smooth to play in. And the upper isn't really anything special, but it's still gonna be geared for performance. So those white patches that run along the midsole and kind of into the upper, those serve to kind of hold your foot in the shoe, keep your foot in there so you don't slide out. And these have a pretty noticeable outrigger on the side that's gonna give you better balance, but we still haven't even gotten to the selling point for this shoe. The traction for the PG5 is top tier. They pretty much copy pasted the traction pattern from the Kobe 9 and they just put it on this year's PG model and it plays great. Like I didn't struggle with slipping at all with this design. Like this is a super lightweight shoe too to move around in. So that's always gonna be a plus. So with this shoe, you're gonna be looking at really nice cushioning setup, the upper that gives you a nice solid support and traction that will have you covered on every single cut. So all of that for the low price of $110 for retail. So all of those factors are what landed the PG5 at number four on my list. All right, so another jersey means another signature shoe line as at number three on my top five basketball shoes of the year is the Nike Kevin Durant 14 or KD 14 model. So different from the PG5s, I love the look of this shoe from the second I saw the leaked images. I mean, they put more into the appearance on this shoe than the pretty basic KD 13 model from last year. That's my opinion, of course, but you know, the KD 14 is one of my favorite shoes to play in. So looking at the minor details first, the strap that kind of runs across the shoe is a 
nod to Kevin Durant's nickname, the Slim Reaper. So that strap is sort of meant to resemble the blade that the Grim Reaper carries. So I thought that was a cool touch. And then if you put both shoes side by side and look at it from the bottom, it's supposed to resemble a skull. But, you know, looking at the shoe from a functional level, they just check every box. So the cushion is nice. You're going to have a full length air zoom trouble unit that's going to be stitched directly into that upper to kind of cut out unnecessary weight and add some responsiveness. And, you know, the KD-14, it just has a nice and soft feel. And then these do have like a layered mesh upper that does remain breathable. And they even added some like thickness to specific areas to give you better support and then of course you're going to have that strap on there too to lock you in although it's not really much of an added element whenever you're talking about performance it may help a little bit though but for traction they built off of an already good shoe from last year so you're going to have some little oval patterns on the bottom that cover your lateral or like side to side movement while the rest of that design is going to handle more of the front to back and you know this is just another shoe that's given me a really solid playing experience overall so the retail price is a little bit higher, I guess middle at 150, similar to the Cosmic Unities, but you know, still very affordable, especially for a shoe that has no real weakness. Although some people have like said the model looks a little bit bulky, although I wouldn't really agree with that necessarily. So yeah, the KD14, a super nice design, which is what lands them at number three on my list. So coming in at number two as the runner up on this list is going to be the Air Jordan 36. So Michael Jordan's shoe line had kind of lost my attention a little bit, but whenever they switched the overall makeup on the Air Jordan 34 a few years back, they just kind of continuously gained it back. And you know, everyone kind of has their preference, but I am a big fan of how they kind of transitioned into more of a weave upper. And the Air Jordan 34 model was also the first time we kind of saw that hollowed out like Eclipse plate on the bottom of the shoe and you know they've kind of been switching up the look of it over these past few years and i think it looks really nice but it has stayed in the design and i definitely like it but for cushioning these have a full length zoom air strobe unit that's going to be similar to the kd14 as it is stitched directly into the upper and you know these do have a really soft feel you even have like an additional zoom air unit that's going to be stacked under the forefoot so you can actually see it bulging out of the shoe kind of from the bottom and some people don't really love that. I guess Jordan sort of went away from that like in the back half of the 20s on his shoe line. So I'm not totally sure why it came back. Some people said like it gave them balance issues in the past, but I haven't really seen people struggle with that on this model. And I know that I didn't struggle with it, but Jordan Brand has also made it a point to make their shoes lighter. And you can kind of see that taking shape over these past few models. But, you know, going on to the upper, moving up the shoe, these do have a Leno Weep upper that is like specifically designed to give you a strong and durable setup while keeping the shoe lightweight, like I just mentioned. And it does provide for some really good ventilation through the shoe, lets your foot breathe. And honestly, this is a really sweet design. I like that weave look. So I will say that the Jordan 35 did have some actual like premium touches of like leather on there, but they took that away on here and kind of put some like fake looking touches around the ankle. So I'm sure some people will miss that like premium feel, but it doesn't really bother me. And then the Air Jordan 36 uses a herringbone pattern from front to back. And you know, it works really great, just like you would expect. That pattern just gives one of the better playing experiences from what I've noticed. So this was just an all around great basketball shoe. It's one of those things you'll have to be willing to pay for though, with the retail price being a little higher at 185, but it's still well worth it in my opinion, because the design is sweet and just, there's really nothing to hate about the Air Jordan 36 model, which is why they landed at number two on my list. So the number one basketball shoe of the year doesn't come in the form of a player shoe line. It actually comes in the form of an all new shoe line. Topping my list of the best basketball shoes to play in of 2021 is the Nike Air Zoom GT Cut. This is one of those shoes that just came out of nowhere and pretty much shattered all of my expectations on how I thought they would be. They released in the middle of the summer and it was kind of rumored to be part of a three pack, but the GT in the title stands for greater than, and there was expected to be a GT run and a GT jump. The GT run did release and you know, I was pretty underwhelmed by those. Those weren't like really close to making the list, but the GT jump just like never happened or it at least hasn't happened yet. But this GT cut, I mean, you could have just started and stopped here. This shoe is so great. So the deconstructed Nike logo is definitely nice. And these have their own kind of new design with like some arrows and like a jagged pattern that shows up on the shoe and on the box as well. So the details are just so clean and they switched up a few things from like the left shoe to the right shoe just on the back. So, I mean, if you can't tell, I'm just like an overall fan of the design. But looking at the performance side, the cushioning is definitely the selling point for these shoes. 
You can see displayed on the midsole that these have React cushioning, which should sound familiar if you've like ever heard of Nike Epic React or Odyssey React shoes. And you know, there's some other shoe lines out there that use that React setup as well. But you know, it's honestly one of my favorite Nike running shoes because of that design. And the React cushioning is going to absorb a lot of the impact, not to mention it kind of molds to your foot with repeated use, but you know, it gets even better because this is a three layer cushioning setup with React on top, a full length air zoom strobe directly underneath. And then in the heel, you're gonna have a zoom air unit as well. So the shoe will definitely keep you a little bit lower to the ground. It's pretty similar to some Kobe models. So, you know, that's gonna help you making like sharp cuts and slashes while giving you plenty of mobility. And then that pretty much transitions us into talking about the upper, which is gonna be made up of a mesh material. So there are some open gaps around the toe area that's gonna uh, beat some really good breathability. You can see through that shoe just to tell how great that's gonna be. But you also have a little bit of an outrigger along the side with some overlays to kind of add to the support to keep your foot in the shoe. And then to finish off with traction, this is a pretty unique traction pattern with kind of how it gets a little more separation or space in the middle between those grooves on the uh, outsole. But, you know, overall they played well, so I can't really knock a design if it works. And, you know, this is a highly sought after shoe. These are reselling on the market for like two to three times their original value. So like either Nike made like 15 pairs or, you know, this is just a really nice shoe, but maybe the answer kind of falls somewhere in the middle there. But the Nike Air Zoom GT Cut was an amazing shoe to play in. And I factor in the appearance too, because this is one of the cleanest designs that came out of this year's releases, in my opinion. So the price is a little bit near the high end at $170 for retail, but they do more than cover that price in my eyes, which is what lands the Nike Air Zoom GT Cut at number one on my list. All right, so that's gonna wrap up my list of the top five basketball shoes from 2021. If you want a little bit more of an in-depth review on each shoe, we do have individual reviews live for them where we go a little deeper into the models. So feel free to check those out. And if you're interested in purchasing any of these models, just check out the links in the description below. But until next review, I'm Landon from Qware. Peace. Mama.